Please be seated. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we honor our secondary school graduates who on this final occasion will be leaving Brampton Centennial and who in individual cases have made the decision to either further pursue their studies or to enter the world of work. This is a special night for all of us, but it is particularly so for you, the parents. Your patience, your support, and most of all, your caring have enabled these young people to reach this particularly significant milestone in their lives. You are entitled this evening to grin, to be happy, and to be justifiably proud of their accomplishments and through their accomplishments, your accomplishments. Along with their many teachers from kindergarten through to secondary school, you have contributed so much to the total development of these young people. And so as principal in welcoming you here this evening, I congratulate you. I extend a very warm welcome to all parents friends, relatives, and guests on this very happy occasion. It is my pleasure now to introduce to you the Master of Ceremonies for this evening, Mr. Luft. Mr. Luft. Thank you, Mr. Gollard. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we are going to present our graduates to you, and we will start with the graduates who will be receiving a secondary school graduation diploma. The first presenter on behalf of the Brampton Centennial staff will be Mr. Fred Anstey. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Steve Allen. Steve will be, is attending Centennial College this year. Robert Andrews. Rob is the manager for Burns Fry Limited, a stock brokerage firm. David Borges. David is at Intercity Papers. Lynn Boyd. Lynn is going to Seneca College. Lisa Bracciali. Lisa is going to Sheridan College and studying to be a legal secretary. Maximilian Brisbane. Maximilian is attending college at the International Academy of Fashion and Merchandising. Barb Buchanan. Barb is also at Sheridan College in the Legal Secretary course. Tracy Ching. Tracy is at Mohawk College in Hamilton, studying in the Child Care Worker Program. Ziggy Chunderbal Singh. Ziggy is working at Kuhn and Nagel Distributing. Jeff Corner. Jeff is working with the City of Brampton.
Diane Correa. Diane is attending Bruno's School of Hair Design. Thank you, Mr. Anstey. Would Miss Van Loosden please come forward? Cassandra Davies. Cassandra is attending Sheridan College in the Legal Secretary Program. Andrea De Jong. Andrea is at the George Brown College for Nursing. Duart De Medeiros. Stuart is working at Peel Memorial Hospital. Lisa Dorrell. Lisa is seeking employment and next year will be attending college in advertising. Cindy Drake. Cindy is, McDon is at McDonnell Douglas, Canada. Lori Drysdale. Lori is working full-time at the Brampton Real Estate Board. Bonnie Lynn Eberhardt. Bonnie is at Sheridan College and is studying conversational French. Kathy Esch. Kathy is working full-time as a key punch operator. Michael Enema. Mike is working at Claude Frost Motors. Deborah Fraser. Deborah is currently taking her grade 13 at J.A. Turner. Christy Lynn Gibson. Christy Lynn is at Sheridan College in the Legal Secretary Program. Sonia Giles. Sonia is attending Sheridan College for Child Studies. Belbeer Gill. Belbeer is at Sheridan College in the Microcomputer Management course. Tammy Nilo. Tammy is working to save money for a real estate course at college. Jeff Hoekstra. Jeff is presently employed at Multitrim. Julie Hoare. Julie is presently working at the Toronto Dominion Bank as a teller. Kim Hunter. Kim is attending Sheridan in the Legal Secretary Program. Michelle Jameson. Michelle is attending a private business college for automotive secretarial skills. Roy Jarvis. Roy is working full time for Yamaha Motor of, of Canada. Tim Cape. Tim is attending Sheridan College in the business course. Andrea Elizabeth Kelly. Andrea is attending J.A. Turner Secondary School and doing grade 13 there. Tracy Ann Kennedy. Tracy Ann is, at business, is doing the business administration course at Sheridan College.
Stephen McDougall. Stephen is presently employed by Dexley Corporation. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our second group of graduates. You should feel free to applaud, you know. We'll wait for Mr. Twist's invocation before it becomes too awesome. Um, our next group of, of students will be presented by Mr. Grimwood. Deborah Lee McFarlane. Deborah Lee is presently attending Sheridan College and taking business administration and will be majoring in accounting. Cindy Marie Mallette. Cindy is employed with a grocery and drugstore chain. Wade Marchak. Wade is working for the weekends and the future. <laughs> Harold Mastine. Harold is in an apprenticeship program in a machine shop and is attending Sheridan College. Hope Elaine McAteer. Hope is looking for jobs that will help her work with animals. Sean Metz. Sean is presently at J.A. Turner Secondary School. Robert Wayne Middaw. Robert is attending Humber College and studying architectural design. Mark Kevin Niefenegger. Mark is currently working as a superintendent and taking a management course at Sheridan. Jennifer Marie Pattison. Jennifer is attending Sheridan College in Brampton and studying early childhood education. Michael John Payne. Mike is working full-time as an assistant meat store manager. Richard Simon Piper. Richard is attending Leaside High School and doing grade 13 in the city of Toronto. Michael John Rathke. Mike is now attending Humber College and is taking retail management. Duart Manuel Rago. Duart is currently employed by a major Canadian corporation. <laughs> Paul Lyle Reed. Paul is presently attending Sheridan College and is enrolled in Art Fundamentals. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our third group of graduates. And our next presenter is Miss Bonnie Baker. Tracy Ann Rindflesh. Tracy Ann is at Sheridan College and is studying secretarial arts. Elaine Denise Ruse. Elaine is working at Dick's Delicatessen. Renee Gail Salisbury. 
Rene is presently employed at Maple Lodge Greenhouses and is hoping to sign up for night courses in public speaking. Lisa Ann Scott. Lisa Ann is taking office administration at Sheridan College. Charmaine Sandra Shaw. Charmaine is attending Sheridan College and is taking fashion design. Geraldine Teresa Sidarius. Geraldine is presently attending Sheridan College, taking a one-year intensive secretarial course. Claudette Silva. Claudette is working at Peel Memorial Hospital as a security guard. Marlene Smith. Marlene is attending Humber College and is majoring in the medical secretary program. Nelson Soares. Nelson is attending Sheridan College and is enrolled in engineering technology. Allison Syme. Allison is attending the Toronto Business College and is taking the course offered for medical secretaries. David Tanti. David is attending Humber College and is enrolled in the architectural drafting course. Paul James Tyndale. Paul is presently working at high-tech manufacturing and is employed as a shipper receiver. Glenn Treasure. Glenn is employed at Tega Lumber in Milton. Grace Helen Van Wissen. Grace is currently at J.A. Turner and is attending grade 13. Sybil Visram. Sybil is attending Humber, Humber College and is studying the pharmacy assistant program. Cindy Watson. Cindy is at Sheridan College in the Office Administration Program. Lisa Jane Williams. Lisa is presently working at a grocery store as a cashier. Tracy Joan Wilson. Tracy is enrolled in, nurse, in the nursing course at Sheridan College. Cindy Ann Young. Cindy is working on her grade 13 program at T.L. Kennedy Secondary School. Yvonne Jada Zuck. Yvonne is working at Le Chateau. And ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our graduates in the secondary school graduation program.
We will now present uh, our diplomas in the secondary school honor graduation program. And the first presenter will be Mr. Tom Casey. Elizabeth Grace Andrews. Liz is attending the University of Western Ontario in physical education. John Jude Bernard. John is at the University of Guelph in the Bachelor of Science program. Sean Brooks. Sean is at Sheridan College and is studying mechanical engineering. Sharon Ray Brownridge. Sharon is at the University of Waterloo in the recreation program, Honors Co-op. Angela Joan Buscard. Angela is at Queen's University and is majoring in sociology. Dave Anthony Carrero. Dave is at the University of Western Ontario and his major is business administration. David Stewart Churchill. Dave is at Trent University and is doing a double major, major in history and politics. <laughs> Wendy Jane Coates. Jane is at Queen's University in the physical education program. <laughs> Albertina da Silva. Albertina is at York University. Jacqueline Allison DeWeird. Jackie is in the education program at Redeemer College. Debbie Ann Michelle Diaz. Debbie Ann is working at present. Nigel Dixon. Nigel is at the University of Ottawa in science. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Our next presenter is Mr. Hill. Our first graduate in this group is Jennifer Lynn Eastman. Jennifer is attending Sheridan College in Child Studies. Carol Ann Folt. Carol Ann is studying French at York University. Michelle Ann Friday. Michelle is at Wilfred, Univer Wilfred Laurier University in the Honors Business Administration program. Stephen Allen Gibson. Steve is at the University of Waterloo in Arts Accounting. Henry Gallo. Henry is, is doing business administration at Brock University in St. Catharines. <laughs> Lorna Grimsditch. And Lorna says she's doing very well, thank you. <laughs> Leanna Susan Guyrie. Leanna is attending Queen's University and is majoring in life sciences. University. Richard J. Mar Guy. Richard is milking cows at the University of Guelph. <laughs> Mary Colleen Hart. Mary is attending Brock University and is studying arts. <laughs> Mr. 
Jennifer Bridget Horniman. Jennifer is, attending is studying finance at the University of Toronto and is a member of the women's varsity rowing team. <laughs> Donald Brian Hunter. Don is at the University of Toronto studying computer science. <laughs> Roger Samuel Jarjour. Roger proclaims himself to be a Waterloo Mathy. <laughs> Michael John Jowett. Michael is attending Queen's University in the engineering program. <laughs> Peter John Jowett. Peter is attending the University of Waterloo and is taking electrical engineering. Tom Kiropoulos. Tom is attending Brock University in Phys Ed and is on the varsity hockey team. Andrew Charles Lavalley. Andrew is doing extremely well in biochemistry at Trent University. Otono B all the way. Derek Bruce Logan. Derek is currently attending McMaster in the Social Science Program. <laughs> Diane Carolyn Lumsden. Diane is attending the University of Toronto in the Faculty of Pharmacy. Oswald Joseph Machado. Oz is at Queen's University and is studying engineering. Thank you, Mr. Hill. And our next pr presenter is Mr. John Paludi. Anthony Paul Mansfield. Anthony is currently attending Brock University in the Business Administration Program. <laughs> Scott McCullough. Scott is studying chemistry at Queen's University. <laughs> Nancy Lynn McGuinness. Nancy is attending the University of Toronto in the Faculty of Pharmacy. <laughs> Heather Joan McNeil. Heather is attending the University of Guelph and is taking biological science. <laughs> Stephen Mead. Steve is at Queen's University in the Life Sciences Program. John James Meredith. John is at the University of Waterloo taking math and chartered accounting. Bonita Esther Miedema. Benita is studying social work at Ryerson Polytechnical Institute. <laughs> Sheila Muir. Sheila is at the University of Western Ontario in first year science. <laughs> Terry Scott O'Brien. Scott is studying television broadcasting at Mohawk College. <laughs> Catherine Teresa Pace. Catherine is studying natural sciences at McMaster University. <laughs> James Alexander Pasichny. Jamie is studying business at McMaster University.
Michael Richard Peening. Mike is studying mathematics at the University of Guelph. Darshan Sharmer Permisir. Darshan is working as a clerk and is studying as well. Irving S. Kwan. Irving is studying science at Western University. <laughs> Robert Marianne Ramosak. Robert is studying administrative studies at Brock University. Frederick Rankin. Paul is studying animation at Sheridan College. Paul Trevor Rhinus. Paul is studying engineering at Western. John Peter Ribick. John is studying sports medicine at Eastern Michigan University. <laughs> Neil Werner Rickenbroke. Neil is studying biological sciences at Guelph and has hopes of getting into medicine. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Paludi. And And our final presenter, ladies and gentlemen, is Mrs. Chris Hannell. <coughs> our first graduate in this group is Bradley Wally Rome. Bradley, Brad is studying social science at Western and hoping to get into business administration. William John Rodzitas. Bill is studying computer science at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Andrea Victoria Russell. Andrea is at Brock University studying social sciences. Miriam Alice Schaap. Miriam is studying math at the University of Waterloo. <laughs> Dorothy Ann Shaw. Dorothy is studying concurrent education at Queen's University. <laughs> Leanna Michelle Shaw. Leanna is studying languages at McMaster. Jonathan Lee Shoal. Jonathan is studying engineering, also at McMaster. And Mark Douglas Smith. Mark, too, is at McMaster studying commerce. Christine Summers. Chris is at the studying geography at Trent University. Terry Lynn Marie Taylor. Terry Lynn is studying business administration at the University of Ottawa. Wayne Verdonk. Paul is currently working for Kodak. <laughs> Eric Walters. Eric is studying biological sciences at the University of Guelph.
Michelle Denise Wardley. Michelle is studying concurrent education at Queens. Karen Ruth Weislogel. Karen is enrolled in the Arts and Science program at the University of Toronto. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, William Thomas White. Bill is studying science at Western. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the graduation class for Brampton Centennial Secondary School for 1985. I will now ask Mr. Norm Gollert to come forward to introduce the next part of our program. Thank you, Mr. Luft. This time I would ask that you rise as I call on Mr. Twist to present the invocation. Mr. Twist. Let us pray. God, we ask your spirit to be present with us on this special occasion. We offer thanks for the privilege of educating and being educated for the opportunities that have been provided to us for personal growth, for eager students, for devoted teachers, for devoted and supportive parents, for the gift of life itself and the countless opportunities we have to share our lives with those around us. We ask that where there is knowledge, give us wisdom. Where there is conviction, give us strength. Where there is intent, give us energy. And above all else, instill in us a sense of gratitude, a sense of responsibility, a sense of justice, and a sense of love for our fellow human beings. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Twist. Honored guests, members of the platform party, staff, parents, friends, relatives, and most of all, graduates. Graduation from secondary school is a special occasion. It is a time of happiness. It is a time for reflection. But most of all, our focus tonight is on success and accomplishment. To you, the graduates, your parents, teachers, relatives, and friends say a very hearty and well-deserved congratulations. You have made us all so very proud of your accomplishments. We know that as you close this chapter, that you are really just beginning a much bigger and more challenging phase for the rest of your life. As you proceed into adulthood, I would like to share with you this brief thought for your future taken from a book on leadership. And that thought is thusly. If you put a man in a boat and tell him to plot a course, he may take one of three views of this task. He may float with the currents and the wind, letting them take him anywhere. Or he may select a destination and try to use full power to go directly to that destination regardless of the currents or the winds. Or he may select a destination and use his rudder and his sails to let the currents and the wind 
eventually take him to his destination. On this final occasion, I strongly encourage you to chart your course carefully and to use your sails and your rudder wisely. We have every confidence that you will continue to do this. We wish you success in each of your individual future endeavors. And so it is with pride and with pleasure on this one final occasion as your principal, I say to you, we will miss you, we wish you good luck, and may God bless you. I have been asked to present regrets on behalf of our superintendent of schools, Mr. Bill Quantz, who is unable to be with us tonight, and that is due to the fact that he is presently attending the commencement proceedings at Central Peel, and obviously he can't be in two places at once, and so he asked that I bring you uh, his thoughts. We have with us some honored guests this evening, and I would like to take a brief moment to uh, introduce them to you and ask that they would take a moment to stand and be recognized. First of all, representing the Flora Rebecca Lodge, Mrs. Darch. Mrs. Darch. <laughs> representing the University Women's Club, Mrs. Moon. Mrs. Moon. and representing Kodak, and there is no connection that one of our graduates is working in Kodak, but you might want to take a good look because this could be your boss, Mr. Watson. And the other special guest that's with us this evening, and I would like to call on now, really isn't a guest, he's more like a permanent member of the staff, to bring you greetings from the Peel Board, Mr. Bob Lagerquist, Mr. Lagerquist. Uh, platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, and graduating class. I suppose I might say I came here by choice tonight. I was supposed to be on cable television making an election speech, and I think I'd prefer being here making, uh, uh, saying a few words to the graduating class and visiting the parents than I would make an election speech. Although uh, I'm going to try and avoid making one but I'd like to say for the people that live in this area, I wish you'd build your homes without steps on the front because boy, it gets tiring walking around. <laughs> anyway, tonight is not my night. This is the night for the graduating class. And I'm certain that uh, Mr. Gollard has spoken well of the young people that are graduating tonight. And I can see by their endeavors that most of them are carrying on with grade 13 and some of those that have gone to work have certainly chosen well as norm tells me he tries to get them all to go to western but i think if he tr tried that we'd have a over flood at western for sure uh, <clears throat> to the parents i'm sure that this is also a great night for you people even the grandparents and i see some of them out there that i happen to know and I, I know what it's like uh, being one grandparent myself to see the young people finally graduate and uh, carry on whatever they intend to do, whether it's post-secondary education or start a profession or whatever. It is certainly, I know that the parents have probably had quite a time for the last five years trying to convince these young people to carry on and uh, it, it, is, it is a job, and I know I've gone through it too, but uh, I'm sure at this stage it is certainly a pleasure for you all. There's other people, I think, uh, the staff of this school, and I'm, when I say staff, I mean everyone connected with the school uh, is proud of you young people. 
I hear them tell me about it, and, uh, even for the custodian, you meet them in the hall, they'll tell you about the young people, they know them, and I think they're quite happy along with everyone else. Of course, the teaching staff deserve a great deal of credit for the work that they have done. And there comes a time, too, when the trustee representing the board, the chairman of the board, and the trustees, all of the trustees, we take a bit of pride in this, too, because we spend a lot of time uh, building the schools, equipping the schools, uh, and hiring the staff. We spend a lot of time at it, and I think graduation, to me anyway, is a very, very enjoyable time. I wouldn't have missed it for the world, and I'd just like to say once again to all you young people that have graduated, whatever endeavor you have chosen, do your very, very best, and I know that you'll do well. And thank you very much. Mr. Gollert, would you come forward for a moment? We forgot to present a graduation diploma to Daryl Ruff, who's on the platform. I would be delighted. I wasn't going to make my speech unless I got this, so... <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, our concert band, under the direction of Mr. Ken Foster, will play for us a medley of popular compositions from the 1950s and the 1960s. And the title of this is Bobby Sox, Saturday Night.
Ladies and gentlemen, we now move into that part of our program where we present scholarships and awards. And this first group of awards are called Awards of Merit. And these are given to those students who achieved an average of 75% or better in the final six credits of the 27 required for the secondary school graduation diploma. I'll ask Mr. Bob Lagerquist to present these awards to the following students. Mr. Lagerquist? The first recipient is Diane Correa. Michael Enema. <laughs> Belbear Gill. <laughs> Kimberly. Hunter. Andrea Kelly. Deborah McFarlane. Harold Mastin. <laughs> and David Smith. David is not here. Uh, Fred, would you take that, please, for David? Thank you. Now the next bunch of awards, ladies and gentlemen, will be presented by various members of staff. I will call upon first place on Mrs. Tina Attenau. The Rotary Club of Brampton Award for Senior Art is given to Lisa Dorell. Lisa was always cheerful, superbly organized, and did beautiful artwork. Thank you, Mrs. Adenau. Mr. Doug Manette, would you come forward, please? And I'd like to invite Geraldine Sidirius to come forward. I'm very pleased to give Geraldine the award for the Canadian Tire Brampton Association Stores the uh, Year 4 Shorthand Award, 80% in that particular subject. Congratulations. <laughs> now, if there was an award for kindness, cooperation, and all around being a terrific girl, I know I'd be giving that to her tonight, too. We think she's terrific. Thank you, Mr. Manette. Now, our next group of awards are the Ontario Scholarships. Now, these are awarded to students who are graduating with a secondary school honors graduation diploma who have achieved 80% or better on six grade 13 credits. Now, not all of our students who have won that award will come present at this time. Some of them are receiving other awards as, awards as well, and they will come present at the time that they receive those awards. The first group will receive their scholarships from Mr. Norm Gullard.
Elizabeth Andrews. Stuart Blythe. Stuart is not here this evening. Angela Buscart. David Carrero. Nigel Dixon. <laughs> Carol Foth. <laughs> Michelle Friday. Stephen Gibson. <laughs> Leanna Guyrie. <laughs> Naomi Khan is not present tonight. Diane Lumsden. And Oz Machado. Thank you, Mr. Gollard. Uh, Mrs. Judith Walker, would you please come forward to present the next set of scholarships? Scott McCullough. Nancy McGinnis. John Meredith. Benita Miedema. Sheila Muir. Scott O'Brien. William Redzitas. Miriam Schaap. Mark Smith. <laughs> Eric Walters. <laughs> Michelle Wardley. <laughs> and Derek Wong, who is not present this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Walker. We now continue with our awards, ladies and gentlemen. And our next presenter will be Mr. Gil Kanitz. David Churchill, please. The Kiwanis Club Award is presented to the graduating student who best combines an awareness of community issues and scholastic achievement. The winner of this year's award and our future Liberal MP for Brampton. Thank you, Mr. Cannons. Mr. Cannons is a libertarian, of course. 
Would Miss Lorna Van Lusten please come forward? Will Jane Coates come up to the front, please? The girls of this graduating class have chosen Jane for the Don Hoare Award for her achievement in the areas of leaders, leadership, scholastics, and sports. Congratulations, Jane. Thank you, Ms. Van Lusten. Mr. Bob Belcher. It's my pleasure to invite Tony Mansfield to the stage. The Brampton High School Memorial Trophy is presented annually to the grade 12 or 13 boy for leadership, scholarships, and sports. As a leader, Tony was a prefect, a team captain, and on the student council. In sports, Tony received his athletic letter competing in, uh, for the school in basketball, football, and rugby. Academically, Tony maintained a good average through his years at uh, Brampton Centennial. Having taught and coached Tony, I, I really think that uh, he receives his high, highest marks and fine personal qualities. The kind of guy I'd, I'd really hope my son would uh, grow up to be like. Congratulations, Tony. Would Mrs. Nancy Moon of the Brampton and District University Women's Club, please? This evening, it is my joy to celebrate the adults who have grown from past grade five students and my privilege to present a scholarship to one deserving student. On behalf of the Brampton University Women's Club, I would like to congratulate Catherine Pace. Mrs. Cyrus Watt. I'd ask Mrs. Starch from the Floral Rebecca Lodge to come forward to present this award. And Christine Summers. This award is given to the student who has attained an overall proficiency planning further education and who has not received any other award. Congratulations, Christine. Thank you, Mrs. Watt. Mr. Dave Street, please. Thank you, Mr. Love. Uh, Michael Jell, would you come forward, please? I'd like to begin by pointing out that Mike is one of a select group of students who have made us proud through their efforts above and beyond the regular classroom requirements. The University of Waterloo operates a series of contests for each high school grade in Canada, runs the contest Canada-wide, and therefore opens the contest to thousands and thousands of students. In the grade 13 Descartes math contest, Mike received a certificate of distinction for finishing in the top 10% of all students in Canada. His second award, uh, Mike also meets the previously mentioned criteria for an Ontario Scholar. Congratulations and best wishes, Mike. Mr. Vince Hill, please. I would like to call on Mr. Gil Watson of Kodak Canada to present this award to Peter Jowett. I taught both Peter and Michael for several years, and I'm still not certain I've got them straight. One day, one showed up with a mustache. Now, I'm really in trouble. They <laughs> both have them. <laughs> the next award uh, is for Danny Lee, who is also an Ontario Scholar. 
and the winner of this year's Sir Isaac Newton Physics Contest, or as we like to call it, the Sin Contest. But I don't think Danny's here tonight. Fred, would you come forward again, please? Heather McNeil, please. Heather is an Ontario scholar and the winner of the Benson and Hedges uh, Scholarship for a student uh, entering a, a course in the environmental science area or related fields. <laughs> Neil Reichenbrock, please. Neil is also an Ontario scholar and the winner of the Peel Memorial Hospital Medical Staff Award. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Mr. Bruce Boys will present the next award. Would Leanna Shaw come forward, please? Leanna is the recipient of two awards tonight. Firstly, the Ontario Scholarship, and secondly, the Brampton Centennial Student Council Award for proficiency in senior music. Congratulations on your fine achievement, Leanna. Thank you, Mr. Boyce. And Mr. Bernie Allen, please. Thank you, Mr. Luff. Uh, this award is given for excellent in year five languages. The recipient of this award is Samantha Slade. Unfortunately, Sam cannot be with us tonight, but maybe this is somewhat appropriate. We thought you would like to know that Sam is studying her favorite language of French in Paris, en France, for this year. So I would ask Fred to come forward and accept on behalf of Sam. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Allen. Mr. Don Guyot. First of all, I'd like, if I may, extend my congratulations to all the graduates achieving grade 12 and 13 diplomas. What you have done over the past four or five years is no small accomplishment. And I think the one word that comes to mind as I speak to the teachers of the class of 85 and as I think back on the class of 85 is the term hardworking. They were a hard-working group of students. Obviously, uh, we are seeing the results tonight. One such representative is to my right, Jennifer Horneman, who will be accepting and receiving a number of war uh, awards. Uh, if you consult your program, you see that she has three here. The Ontario Scholarship for Academics, the Brampton Centennial Student Council Award for proficiency in senior music, the J.R. Willis Scholarship given to the Ontario Scholar who has made the most valuable contribution to Brampton Centennial. And later on in the evening, you will again encounter Jennifer receiving an academic letter, an athletic letter, a citizenship letter, and they will culminate as well in an achievement award. But to go back to the J.R. Willis Scholarship, if we could for a moment, for the student who has made the most valuable contribution to Brampton Centennial. And I'm sometimes asked just what does that mean? Because we come here in the evening, we see that term, but we do not have the uh, specific. I checked Jennifer's record with regard to this particular award and find that over the years at Brampton Centennial, she has participated in the concert band, the basketball team, the students council, the track and field team, the swim team, 
lifeguard, alpine ski team, drama club, prefect, spirit club, volleyball team, student tutor, and referee, giving as well uh, her leadership in the offices of president, captain, class representative, appeal Halton competitor, and appeal Halton finalist. I mentioned as well her academic award. She is a, an Ontario scholar. When she came to us from Centennial Senior, she had the Centennial Senior Public School Letter, runner-up to the Award of Excellence. In her first year at Brampton Centennial Secondary, she was the Rookie of the Year. She has obtained awards in the academic, athletic, extracurricular uh, aspects of the school. She has received the Brampton Centennial Secondary School Proficiency Award uh, in Grade 11, a Certificate of Merit in the Fermat Math. Anything else, Jennifer? She was also chosen, you may recall, last year to represent our graduating class as valedictorian for the past year. When she's not at school, when she was not at school, she found time to be a volunteer YBA coach, a member of Christ Church Altar Guild for five years. She attended Camp Enterprise, sponsored by the Rotary Club of Mississauga. She was a performer in the Peel Music Festival for five years, performer in piano recitals at Brampton Public Library, clarinet player for Peel Manor uh, Senior Citizens Home, piano student of the Royal Conservatory of Music, uh, uh, reaching grade seven, and a volunteer swim instructor for children ages two to 10. She has many special talents. She can type and play the clarinet, not at the same time, but as well, the, uh, she plays the piano, the guitar, she studied computer science, she can operate Icon computers, she can operate the Philips 6000 terminal, uh, the Pitney Bowes copier, she can write and speak French. She has obtained her Canada Accord from the Girl Guides of Canada, completed following aquatic awards, National Lifeguard Service, uh, Brampton First Aid, Royal Life Saving Bronze Medallion, and the Royal Life Saving Senior Resuscitation. As I say, she is an outstanding representative of an outstanding class, the class of 85 itself. And I've often felt that the child is father of the man or the mother of the woman, as the case may be. And so, Jennifer, I researched even a little further Do you remember Deep River? Do you remember Mrs. Davies? Mrs. Davies was Jennifer's kindergarten teacher. And I have your report. <laughs> by special courier from Deep River. And this is what was said of Jennifer at that time. She quickly settled into the new classroom situation. She is very enthusiastic, showing a lot of warmth to others. She has a very mature approach to her work. She can read and write simple sentences without any trouble. <laughs> and believe me, that's an accomplishment long beyond kindergarten. She is always eager to help and please in the classroom and I feel sure that she will continue to do very well in her work in kindergarten one. Well, Mrs. Davies must have been an excellent teacher because a few years later, we see the result. And as I said earlier, you'll be seeing and hearing more uh, about Jennifer this evening, and I feel as well in the days and years to come, you will be hearing more about Jennifer Horneman. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Guide, and thank you, Jennifer. Mr. Dave Street, please. Thanks, Mr. Love. Tough act to follow. I'd like to call Roger Gerger to the carpet, please. <laughs> Roger is a triple award winner tonight as well. As you see on the program, he has met the criteria as an Ontario scholar. 
He introduced himself as a Waterloo Mathy. We're certainly proud of that. Another award is the Mathematical Association of America Award for the top student in our school in the senior math contest. And he also wins a Descartes Certificate of Distinction for finishing the top 10% in all of Canada. We would like to, I would like to thank Roger on behalf of the math department for his efforts and for representing BCSS so admirably. Congratulations, Roger. Steve and me, would you come forward, please? Steve is without doubt one of the most outstanding students that I have ever had the pleasure of teaching. His awards will speak for themselves. First of all, Steve obviously gets an Ontario scholarship. The next award that I'd like to introduce is the Peel Board of Education Scholarship for ex Excellence in Year 5 Mathematics. His marks in Calculus 94, in Algebra 95, and in Relations and Functions 98. To show that he's not just a mathy, if you add in some science performances, you find that he wins the T.W. Martin Scholarship for Year 5 Graduate Averaging Highest in Relations, Algebra, Calculus, Physics with 95, and Chemistry with 94. If this is not one of the brighter students that we've ever had at Brampton Centennial, I don't know who is. Congratulations, Stephen. Thank you, Mr. Street. And Mr. George Atkinson, please. The next award recipient is Karen Weiss logo. <clears throat> Karen, as you can see by your program, has become an Ontario scholar. She has also won the Peel Board of Education Scholarship for Excellence in Year 5 English family studies and history. If we wish to catalog her marks too, we may do as follows. In Canadian literature in 93, in the Canadian family 91, in the regular English course at grade 13, 86, and in Canadian and US history, too bad it's a poor subject, 85. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. We now move to that part of the program, ladies and gentlemen, where we present our various letters. We have three sets of letters to be presented, the academic letter, the athletic letter, and the... It's my pleasure to introduce the valedictorian for this year's graduating class. Chosen by his peers, Daryl Ruff best exhibits the fine qualities which are characteristic of our graduates. Throughout secondary school, Daryl has proven to be not only a sincere, hard-working student, but a talented athlete as well. Last year, during grade 13, Daryl quali qualified himself for university admission and at the same time played hockey for the junior B hockey team, the Bramley Blues. Currently studying business at Brock University, Daryl hopes to pursue a career in real estate appraisal. We wish him much success in the future and are proud to have him represent our 1984-85 graduates. Daryl. If you consulted your program, you noticed they missed my name. You wouldn't be hearing this speech if they hadn't have uh, corrected that, for starters. Um, well, good evening, honored guests. Uh, Mr. Gollert, Mr. Guyot, of course, Miss Watt, and of course, I won't forget Mr. Audi. <laughs> I'm very honored to have been chosen valedictorian this year. My main objective at the start of grade 13 was just to end up in this building tonight, but being elected to speak on behalf of the graduating class of 1985 was an unexpected pleasure. Over the past four years, 
we'd heard about and been warned of the mysterious horror of grade 13. Last year, seated in this very room, we the cocky undergrads entered our final year, expecting to endure another enlightening speech by our principal. <laughs> However, there was a twist to this particular speech, and the cockiness soon disappeared. The words that left Mr. Gollert's mouth were those describing the infamous snowball. <laughs> For those of you who don't know about this snowball, let me give you a simplified summary. You've got a snowball at the top of a hill, and you've got the student. If the student doesn't maintain and do well in his subjects, the snowball begins to roll. And then the snowball begins to chase the student down the hill along with his marks. <laughs> By the time Mr. Gullard had finished, we no longer had any confidence or faith in this our final year. <laughs> this feeling was much the same as the one of insecurity back in grade 9, September 1979. It seems so long ago now, and in retrospect, there was uh, much long and hard work ahead of us. But we conquered more than just the schoolwork. We became the grads here tonight. Brampton Centennial was a place we became our own person. We matured and learned how to cooperate, especially with our chemistry labs. <laughs> we learned to live, love, and laugh with each other. And those experiences are what made our memories here at Brampton Centennial. In our memories, the deep crevices of despair couldn't even compare with the peaks of achievement. See, Miss Handel, I was listening in geography. We have learned many other things in the past five years at Brampton Centennial. And I would like now to reflect on the people who are responsible for our education, the teachers. There was one topic that the teachers just couldn't educate us on, and that was fashion. <laughs> it seemed every day someone in the math department had to wear green. Up until this year, their fashion sense left a lot to be desired. But that was before dashing Dave Street arrived. <laughs> Upon his arrival, the female attendance rose by 17%. <laughs> In the science department, the gap between the teacher's knowledge and the student's knowledge was narrowed substantially. Physics was a difficult subject with many complex problems. And I found, I found them hard to grasp. And I think the physics teacher did too. <laughs> Especially if the answer wasn't in last year's notes. We all have our crutches, but those of the teachers can be noticed quite easily. Mr. Corner had the key to every problem. Mr. Williamson had his handy dandy periodic table. And of course, Mr. Casey had the prairie chicken dance. However, if it hadn't been for those teachers, I think the old snowball would have seemed twice as large. Many teachers deserve our special thanks for creating a better and more rewarding year by sacrificing their free time for school teams and events. One of the most memorable events was turnaround day. This is where the teachers became the students and the students became the teachers. As students, when the, day, when the end of the day came around, we were all exhausted and we realized how tough it can be reigning over our younger schoolmates. But it wasn't a picnic for the teachers either. With Brad Rome as acting principal, he had a few teachers fearing for their jobs. <laughs> While mentioning Brad Rome, I'd like to thank him and his grandparents for hosting a number of parties at their cottage. <laughs> These parties just aren't an everyday party. These parties included half the grade 13 population breaking loose in the Muskokas. Just ask anybody who was there how much fun it was, and they'll tell you. Except for John Bernard, he couldn't remember too much. <laughs> Throughout the year, there was oolies for coolies, parties, and get-togethers. These parties were essential. They represented a lifeline, an escape from the pressures of grade 13. Especially when November came rolling around, because there was no snowball left. It was an avalanche. <laughs> the year eventually ended and was celebrated by a fantastic formal. And now, the last tribute to high school is here tonight at graduation. Whether entering a college, university, or the workforce, 
I'm sure the year spent at Brampton Centennial will always be a warm memory. Just before I finish up, there's one other thing that Jennifer Horneman did, and that was she gave me some guidelines and helped me do this speech, so I'd like to give a special thanks to Jennifer. <laughs> I had to say that because I know you guys would have known I was lying. <laughs> and in conclusion, I'd just like to say I wish all of you the best of luck in the future and whatever road you decide to take, or as Mr. Gollert put it, whatever current you decide to take. Thank you very much. Fred Gordon, please. Well, you've seen me before. <laughs> now you get to hear me speak. Honored guests, platform party, and graduates, good evening. It's a great honor for me to be standing here talking to everybody here tonight, but it's an even greater honor for me to do the task that I've been asked to do. First thing that I would like to do is offer thanks to our valedictorian, Daryl Ruff, for his address to us all this evening. I'm sure it's a speech uh, many of you will never forget. So please join me in another round of applause for Daryl. At this time, I'd like to ask Daryl to come back up here. And I have for him a gift. And this gift is from the students of Centennial and the staff to thank you for your outstanding achievement at school. Well, this about concludes all I have to say, so I'll turn it back to Mr. Luff. Thanks, Fred. Mr. Gollard. Thank you, Mr. Luff. Before I bring the... <laughs> Daryl, did you plan that? Before I bring the proceedings this evening to a close, I do have a special announcement that I have been asked to make. In recognition of the approaching 20th anniversary of Brampton Centennial Secondary School, a group of graduates, not just this year's graduates, but in previous years, and present staff are making preparations for this 20th anniversary, tentatively entitled Reunion 87. All graduates, friends, and relatives are encouraged to sign the information sheets that are present in the reception area this evening. Should you require any additional information, would you take a moment to speak with Mr. Tate and he will give you more details. Be patient. An event such as this does not take place easily and without a lot of hard work on the part of a great number of people. And so I trust that I will mention all of the people, and if in so doing I omit a name, it really is not by design, but rather through careless error. Special thank you to you, the parents and friends and relatives for being here this evening. To Mrs. Evans, where are you, Mrs. Evans? And her commencement committee, a very sincere thank you on a very well-designed and well-run evening. As usual, to Mr. Ward, Mrs. Sana Harriet, and the entire awards committee, a special thank you. Our very worthwhile MC for this evening, Mr. Luft, thank you. To the many donor, donors uh, of awards from uh, the community and the region, a special thank you. To our very capable and reliable audiovisual crew, to the custodians, the secretaries, to Fenley's florists who have so graciously donated flowers, 
And a special thank you to Mr. Foster and the band. You sounded just terrific. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would invite you to a reception in the large gymnasium, which is immediately to your left as you proceed out. I would ask that the audience to please remain seated until the recessional has been completed. Thank you and good evening. <laughs>